Hey Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Wanted to make a quick video for the sites, for the coordinators, even for the CRAs. AEs, adverse events. All right, sometimes in studies, you will discover adverse events come out of nowhere, right? Lab results is a perfect example. Somebody may be asymptomatic, but they're showing lab results pointing towards something. In the case we had earlier this week, a patient seems to have a UTI. So how to go about this? First of all, if you're a coordinator, even if you are a, like a foreign trained clinician, foreign trained physician, always go to the PI. Now sometimes the PI is not the primary care provider for this patient or the patient's actual physician. They're just a research physician. Still go to your PI because your PI is responsible for patient safety in their studies. Next, if the patient allowed you to notify their current physician of their participation in the study, you can ask the patient, hey, give the patient their results and say, hey, we think this may be an adverse event we can do an unscheduled visit, but we'd like to get your clinicians, your own clinician's opinion on what we should do. Regardless of what that situation is and what the patient's clinician thinks, an unscheduled visit usually is in order for something such as abnormal lab results. It's just basically standard of care in clinical research, even though research is not care. It's a standard in clinical research. Um, just to confirm the lab results. Once you start looking closer at a lab result, then it may become more apparent that there is an actual adverse event. In which case, even if the patient told you, I do not want my, phys my physician knowing, your PI, if they're not their physician, can prescribe if they want medication for that patient. They are a doctor. Many times, if they're not the treating physician, if they're just the research physician, they won't want the liability. So they will insist that the patient get this medication or prescription from their provider. So even if the patient told you, hey, don't let my primary care know, you still need to have a conversation with the patient and say, look, you told us not to let your primary care provider know but here's your lab results, both the original lab result and when we did the unscheduled visit. It's in your hands now. You take it to your clinician and let them know and see if they're going to prescribe you anything. If they prescribe something, that becomes a con med, right? Now, if your PI thinks, hey, after the second unscheduled visit lab, lab uh, result, that it's an AE, it's an AE and you have to list it as such. If they think, no, you know, there could be other explanation, the patient should see their primary care physician, that should be documented. Regardless of what happens, regardless of the outcomes, whether AE or not, the documentation process should be evident in the subject source. It could be documentation in the form of a progress note. It could be documentation in the form of a note to file. It could be documentation in the form of an email from the coordinator or the PI to the medical monitor or to the lab or to the CRA or to whomever. You just need some kind of documentation. In most cases where lab results are pointing towards a possible AE, it in fact is an AE, but again, only the PI can really make that assessment. Um, that should be documented, obviously, as adverse events, both in the source and in the EDC, and then any medications that are prescribed either by the PI or by the patient's clinician should be documented as conmeds for the adverse event. And then the adverse event should have a start and end date and sometimes, pay attention, the adverse event could lead towards the patient having to be early terminated from the study. In our case, the example that I'm drawing upon, it's not, it seems to be a urinary tract infection. 
our PI is the patient's primary care provider. Um, well, technically, his practice is the primary care provider. It's a nurse practitioner that is our patient's primary care provider. So it should be a little easier to communicate um, con meds and get the records and all that stuff because it's all in-house. So just wanted to walk you through this because I know if you're a new coordinator, it could be overwhelming. If you're a new PI, maybe it's overwhelming. If, if you're a new CRA, this could be overwhelming too. So just a little bit of adverse events. Sometimes it's not as simple as, hey, patient tells you I have a headache. Okay, you document headache. Sometimes it's you got to read between the tea leaves as we're doing here. And the process still has to be documented. Thank you very much, Guru Nation. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.